Hello, everybody. Dave Neal here, stand-up comic host of Bachelor Nation News. And we have a new member of the uh, production team here at Bachelor Empires. Bachelor Happy Hour has a co-host. It's Michelle Young. Here she is, Michelle's new job. Posted on Instagram. And uh, just two Midwest girls taking on the podcast world. So excited to be joining Becca Kufrin on Bachelor Happy Hour. So uh, a lot of congrats from her boyfriend, fiance. Is Nate, are they engaged? They're engaged, right? Jeez, I can't keep track. Natasha, Midwest is the best. Uh, you know, Bree Springs, Abigail, they all send her their love. And of course, let's just play a clip. Michelle Young and Becca Kufrin share how excited they are to co-host together. Let's try to get through this uh, without a hitch. We'll have to how see. How are you feeling? Because you've never, I mean, you've done podcasts, you've done so many interviews, but now yeah. like the roles are reversed. So you get to be interviewing, putting everyone in the hot seat with me. I feel like I'm going to enjoy being in this position more than being in the hot seat. You know, like, oh, yeah. I get to ask the questions. Yeah. You know? All right. So she's going to enjoy being in this position. I just have to say my Patreon knows they've been listening that they're using these nice $400 sure SM seven B microphones, industry standard, the best microphone that there is. And yet they have this crazy hissing noise, which means there's something wrong with their post-production. How big of a show can the bachelor be owned by ABC owned by Disney where they don't have like dedicated, like the best stuff out there. I've been saying this all along. They, during the pandemic, went to Zoom, you know, where they, they, uh, they, you know, Skype interview and it's garbage and I get it for the pandemic, but now it's like, make them a nice bachelor studio. I don't want this job. They can't afford me. I don't want to work with them, but they need somebody. They need like a nice studio, three camera setup. They need one in LA, New York, Nashville. You know, they need a few different locations where they can get this content out. They just don't care. Reverse. The it's, roles are reversed. It's Let's go. so fun. I mean, I was telling you before we started recording, the last time we officially announced a, an official co-host with me, I keep saying official, it was two years ago, pre-COVID. Wow. And obviously we've bopped around. We've had different guest co-hosts with me. That has been so much fun to recap each season. But like, you're in it to win it with me. We're in it for the long yes, haul. Yes, we are. It's, it's going to be a wild ride, but I love that I have a former bachelorette with me because you can give so much more insight and just advice and knowledge to... The okay, I would be furious if I were them because this isn't their problem. They're not the sound engineers. You can... Am I losing my mind? Am I having a stroke? This is their audio, not mine, right? Contestants and other leads coming through. So I can't wait. What are you most excited about for happy hour? I think just being able to, one, watch the show and not be on the show and not have to watch myself on the screen anymore, yeah. but to actually like dive into all these other contestants and like really get to talk to them, really get to know them. Um, and advice, hey, mm -hmm. like you said, I mean, being a bachelorette. like we Now, so Michelle, by all means, great teacher, great soul, great human. What makes a good podcast host comes in different shapes and forms. Nick Vile, some people don't like Nick. He's good because he's cynical, very cynical with his takes, that which can be good because the audience is like, ah! Michelle's nice. I don't know how far nice is going to go if she's not willing to get into the cracks and fissures of conversations and breakups and things like that. But I think she's very smart, and I think that will be nice for her to rise to the occasion of good conversation. Um, but yeah, we'll have to see. Let's go back to the bad audio. We've been in every single role. Right. You've been in every single role, because you've <laughs> also been, been on Paradise too, right? I should have, yes. But it's just going to be, I'm, I'm really looking forward to it. It's going to be fun. I'm so excited. And I mean, <laughs> you already know, like Bachelor Nation as a whole, with not only- The best is here in the lobby in the background. Oh my gosh! This. Only the contestants and the leads, but like the followers and the fan base, it's crazy. It's like no other. It's like it, it is truly a nation and you've seen things, you've read things, you kind of know mm -hmm. what people can expect. And so you're like the most primed position to be here with me right now. So before we begin questioning and getting into like all the fun interviews <laughs> and games, I got to cheers to you. Oh, welcome to Bachelor Happy Hour. I've been ready for this day for for far too long, far too <laughs> long. So it's a, it's here. I can't wait. Cheers to you. Cheers. To that. cheers to them and cheers to a sound guy that they need to hire. And I love that my audience on the Patreon, by the way, we make these live behind the scenes. If you want to be a part, if you want to be a part of the nonsense, let me tell you something. We just eviscerated somebody 
Uh, you know, I share a lot of the trolls and all the hater comments and stuff. Patreon.com slash Dave Neal. If you want to be a part of the private membership only community uh, that is out there. All right, let's play this second and last clip of the poor audio. Uh, boy, I mean, hey, like I said, it's nothing against them. You know, I'll, I'll never be accused of, of normalizing bad audio. Okay, you got that from me. My opinion on this one thing that I'm really curious about. So what you can hear when when they stop talking, the hissing noise goes away, which means that they're like very low down here, and the uh, the system's trying to boost it as much as it can because it's not picking up a good audio, and because of that, it's picking up room tone as well. So what they need, I mean, the mics are at a very safe distance. They just need to boost it up and then talk a little bit, and then you know, wouldn't that be nice if they were just talking at a decent, you know? Is when people go on this show and you learn to be vulnerable like you really do i think that's one of the positive things about the show yeah. is that you really learn how to open up genuinely right. i was not a vulnerable person i did not talk about emotions <laughs> i did not talk about my feelings and i sure as heck did not let people see me cry mm -hmm. and so um now i cry, cry all the time nate can tell you <laughs> he's like jeez <laughs> <laughs> yeah now i cry all the time nate's like i know jeez she wakes up she cries i bake her a muffin she cries she's at uh ash and k in the comment section said michelle's not too nice Nice in a good way on her Instagram stories. She got a nice edit uh, on the show, but seems more spicy than that in real life. All right, I'm down for spicy Michelle. Give us a uh, spicy Michelle. That's one thing you're like, I'm not going to cry. And I was like, you're going to cry week two. They will break you. It will happen. Uh, yeah, the fatigue, you yeah. know, the fatigue gets to you. But when people come off of this show, if it doesn't work, right? Like if you don't end up with that person, mm -hmm whatever it is, and if you go back to real world dating, do you go back to real word world dating speed? Never. Or no, like Nate and I had this conversation the other day, well, and that's you're kind of going back and forth. And it's like, is it hard to go back to dating normally? Because now for me, I feel like it'd be personally, like I'd sit down on a first date and be like, I don't care about your favorite color. I don't yeah. care about, I mean, I do, but, but I want to get to the good things. You know what I yeah. mean? Like, I, there's just so many things that you can figure out quickly. Is this mm -hmm. going to work or do I even want a second date or not? You know, like, right. it, it's hard to go. It'd be hard to go through those small talk conversations. Yeah. I, well, I'm probably not the person to ask because I went from bachelor right away to bachelorette. Obviously was with my ex for a yeah. while and then Two went, years. you know, went through the breakup, had, was not ready to date and then went up paradise. So I never yeah. went back to the real world oh, as Thomas slowly walks by with bagels. What a sight to behold. Um, <laughs> oh my goodness. So I never went back into like, quote, real world dating, but mm -hmm. I think it's something that comes with age because at that point, you know, dating when you're younger, say. Uh, you know, God, golly, maybe it's just me because I'm late for lunch and I'm hungry, but snooze fest. It's not them. It's the audio, guys. I'm blaming the audio. Um, yeah, it sounds like it's like, hey, can we can we do a podcast in a bank? Let's do a podcast in a bank atrium. That'll be nice. You know what I mean? Anyway, uh, God bless them. Uh, if you guys want, I'm going to be going live uh, just after 2 p.m. Pacific time today. If you're watching this today, Monday, I'm going to go live. We've been expecting to hear about the new men of the uh, next season of The Bachelorette that might drop or not. We're going to be waiting with bated breath, with good audio. You know me, good audio, Dave. In the meantime, uh, let me know what you guys think below. Uh, I'm excited for them. I just think they need to fix up their tech issues. And we'll talk to you guys in a little bit. Bye now.